going on, Sheath at TV? It's Joseph Randolph. And Brian Moffey. And we are right back at you on CHTV's Packers Draft Room. We are touching on this very deep cornerback class. Nobody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about quarterbacks. They're talking about offensive tackles, the lack of edge rushers. Nobody's talking about how deep this cornerback class is. Uh, Brian, tell them how deep this class is. It's deep. <laughs> I think some people are talking about it, but yeah, I mean, it's it's deep. Um, you know, for a, a, a Packers fan perspective, it's not super deep. Like there's a bunch of uh, like slot guys with smaller slot guys and um, stuff like that. But uh, overall, so it's a really deep class. It's 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 a conundrum on when or if the Packers will select the cornerback. Obviously, uh, uh, there's some question marks around Eric Stokes. Um, you know, Keyshawn Nixon is back in the fold. Uh, how much a role uh, Valentine and Valentine, uh, the law offices of, will contribute uh, in the 2024 season? And, and I think, honestly, because of those two, that might that might give uh, Gutekunst a reason to maybe maybe wait a little bit later. You know, a lot of people were talking about a couple uh, Alabama corners going in the first round, maybe coming to the Packers, but maybe because of the success of the uh, rookies uh, going into uh, last year and the addition of uh, uh, Robert Rochelle, maybe, you know, there may not be a need to draft a cornerback in the first round or even on day two. Uh, as deep as this class is, there's talent to be found all the way through. I mean, going even into maybe the sixth round, uh, where would you say the talent, you know, really kind of drops off, Brian? Um. Overall, probably probably fourth round, fifth round, I think is where you see a, a big drop. Um, yeah, probably after like the fourth round, you see kind of a big drop. I mean, there's still dudes to be found. There's always there's always dudes to be found, you know, in every draft. <clears throat> um, but yeah, probably after the fourth round is where you see see the biggest drop as far as talent. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm I'm a little I'm maybe like a half a round later, maybe into the early six. It just depends on where these guys go. Um, I think teams will kind of kind of sit back and rest on their laurels and get other positions. And then uh, I think we'll probably see a run maybe mid to late day two where people are like, oh, shoot, like these guys are still here. And then once the teams get their fill, we might have a second run somewhere between late fourth, maybe going into the fifth. It just depends on on what's going down in the draft and as, as people start coming off the board. We're going to get right in it because um, there's there's a bunch of players. Uh, we're going to start off with probably the quintessential number one guy, and that's Toledo's uh, Quinion Mitchell. Uh, Toledo's come a long way, a long way. I mean, they're, they're starting to pit out some, some quality defensive athletes. Uh, maybe the offense will catch up in another year or two. Um, Mitchell is – Mitchell is everything. Um, there's, there's really nothing. He's not, um, the ball production is there. The testing is there. Uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to do other than just, you know, day one, he, he may just be your number one corner day one. Um, he's that good. He's that silky smooth. Uh, Brian, you love him too, right? Of course. Of course. Uh, wish he'd be a Packer, but he obviously won't be there, uh, when they pick. Um, even if they trade up, they'd have to trade really high to get to him. But um, anyway, yeah, you know, he's got the size, he's got the athleticism, he's got, uh, like you said, even the production. Um, you know, there was a, the question early on that, you know, who's playing in the MAC. So whether, okay, was it just because he's playing against these substandard players, substandard athletes, whatnot? He went to senior bowl and he balled out. He still was the same dude he was during the season. So that kind of proved that wrong. And then, you know, of course, there was the questions about, Toledo, they played off coverage like 99% of the time. Um, and so, you know, teams were not sure, like, oh, how is he going to do in zone? How is he going to do in, in press man and stuff like that? You know, does he, will he, um, how comfortable will he be in it and stuff like that? But then with the senior bowl and then the, at least the, the snaps he did see, you know, in press and in press man and stuff like that, he looked probably fine. He looked good. He looked comfortable. Um, probably still needs to get better at it, of course. But, um, he still looked good enough to where you think, okay, well, we can drop him in there day one and he sh should be able to hold up, um, you know, and just let him kind of learn, just improve on the little things as, as he goes. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, whoever, with how high he's going to go, probably he'll be that person, that team's number one corner, basically, whenever they draft him. I don't, I don't care about press man. I love press man. I don't care about press man. I, I was an off corner myself. And you know, the great thing about off being off corner, uh, you don't get beat on a slant. Um, so you don't get beat on a curl either because you're normally standing right there where the ball is supposed to go. Um, that's just my, my, my logic there, you know, press, you know, you go against the Devonte Adams, the Marvin Harrison's of the world, you might get beat early. And then, you know, unless you got the recovery speed, you're, you're done off coverage and eh, three to five yards off. I got time to absorb the double move. I got time to recover. I got time to break on the slant, the curl. There, there's, there's nothing wrong with these off coverage corners. I don't know why the NFL likes to knock them so much. It's, it's the safe thing to do. You know, it's the safe thing to do. Now, now, obviously, if it's if it's third and two, then you know, you, you got to risk it for the biscuit. But uh, off coverage, there's nothing wrong with off coverage. Um, anyway, Quinn Mitchell, he's gonna set the market for this draft class. Uh, he really should honestly go top five. That's my. That's my. That's my my evaluation but because of these pesky quarterbacks where half of them are going to be bust and you know they're going to sink their franchises for another seven years he's probably going to go somewhere in the 10 to 15 range so with that being said um if the packers are are players in the first round um there's some there's some pretty good dudes you know coming after quinian mitchell going into the top 20s and the top 25s. We're going to get right into them. We're going to just package them together. Um, the last of the Nick Saban era, we've got the Crimson Tides, Terry and Arnold and Kool-Aid McKinstry. Um, personally, Brian thinks Terry is number one on in that duo. I think Kool-Aid's number one. Um, but we agreed uh, Kool-Aid has the higher floor. Yep. And, and basically – He's ready. He's more ready now. If I would say Terry on may, he may get to Quinny and Mitchell's, you know, stratosphere, but Kool-Aid is ready to go right now. Kool-Aid is line him up outside and just let him eat. Um, what would you say about the two, Ryan? Yeah, they're, um, actually somewhat similar athletes, you know, neither, they're not really burners. Um, but they're, I mean, I, I don't think either of them tested the Jillies, but, um, you know, they're, they're Jillies pretty decent, you know, um, they both got good size, both about six foot, six foot one, I think in that range. Um, and they're both in the one nineties. So, you know, they're both good size, you know, they're kind of your, almost your quintessential Alabama corner. They're both good size, not super fast, uh, both pretty technically solid. Although Arnold probably loves a little bit more raw with his technique and stuff like that. Um, but, um, the one thing I do like about Arnold a lot is, is when he press when he presses he presses with his feet that's something you don't see a lot in college most guys when they press they're pressing with their hands and they're getting touchy and grabby with the guys and they're and they're getting penalties and you know they get penalties and and then of course penalties become more in the nfl so they get penalties on the nfl and so they don't you know they don't get played a lot and you know they're not backups and they're special teamers and whatever because they're you know so grabby and stuff but because he presses with his feet the chance of him getting penalized is basically zero so I think that's something that's going to really help uh, in the NFL with him when he does play press or even just in man, whatever he uses. He's really good with his feet. They're really quick feet, smooth feet, stuff, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, like we said, I, I or you said for me, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, I think he has the higher upside, of course. But uh, Kool Aid's ready now. Um, I think he's his strength is probably as a zone corner. I think that right now he's best, most ready to compete. But he can play press man, of course. Um, and um, and uh, what's it called uh, Kool Aid can also return for you uh, i don't think he would be a ideal returner but if you need someone to return if you know your return is injured or whatever you can you can go back there and you can return and be a safe returner um i think kool-aid uh you know is his like i said his, his um ceiling's not as high but he's at the higher floor so i think you he can come in be a decent number two for you year one um you know and and go from there and then but then arnold's got the higher upside i think yeah you made a good point about uh the press with the feet um you know, when, when you press, when you press with your feet, um, you do a better job of stymieing the route. Um, you also knock the timing off. Pressing with your feet is an excellent way to disrupt timing. Um, and which is a lot of routes nowadays. Most routes are thrown, you know, on a line where the receiver absolutely has to be 
in that spot for that ball to even be catchable. If not, it's just going to go into the cameraman. Um, so when you press with your feet, that's a great way to redirect. That's a great way to throw the timing of a route off. Um, the problem is, is made, well, I won't say a problem, but the downside of pressing with your feet is if the, if the other receiver is a true release artist, sometimes they can take that momentum and, uh, you know, get a wiggle around you. So you, you have to be very, very precise with it. But on top of that, Nick Saban has patented what we call the Saban Shuffle. Uh, which helps uh, corners bail out a little bit quicker. I wish I had learned that in my days playing. Um, it was the old fashioned, you know, back pedal, transition, open your hips. Uh, the, 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 the classic bailout shuffle by Nick Saban. Um, that's why Nick Saban is why he is who he is. You know, he is, he is the uh, DB coach. Um, so, um, the fact that Terry and Arnold has that, you know, locked down um, is probably why his ceiling is just a tad bit higher than Kool Aid's. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to put too much of a of a a big margin between the two um, because obviously, like Ryan said, Kool Aid has the uh, the special teams ability, so they 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 have they have their upsides in in uh, multiple ways. But um, yeah, wherever I think Mitchell goes, go ahead. Sorry, no, I think and I think Arnold's Arnold will like like uh Mitchell will probably be gone before the Packers have a chance at him. Yeah, Mitchell will will set the the market and then it's it's anybody's guess. Some people have even talked about Kool-Aid going before Tyrion. Um so it really just depends. I mean the Packers end up if either one is a win. Um so I if if Quinion's probably 10 to 15 range. Tarion and Kool-Aid, depending on who you like more, is probably 13 to 22. You know, so that kind of puts us within striking distance. It just all depends with these quarterbacks, uh, these offensive tackles. And, you know, everybody loves a good first round wide receiver, uh, not in Lambeau. Um, so it, it, it's anybody's guess on, on how that's going to play out. So uh, the next few guys are definitely in our range. But they're probably going to be uh, probably going to be day two guys, uh, and, and let's go with uh, a sibling of a current Packer, and that's Max Melton uh, out of Rutgers. Rutgers has Rutgers has found a way to put out some solid dudes, despite being a doormat for the Big Ten, um, and and they're putting guys out late. But Max Melton is getting his roses now. Um, I thought I had a maybe as a fourth rounder, and then through the through the offseason process, he's bounced himself up into possibly maybe even early second round territory. And it's it might just be the speed, but it's also the fact that uh, he will put a hat on you at the same time. Um, I think there's some special teams ability there as well. So. It's really a question of uh, again, you know, the top three where they go. But I think Max Melton is a is a solid target early on in day two. Um, what would you say uh, he's at, Brian? Yeah, I would say day two. I'd say like probably late second, probably the second or their like the Packers second second round pick fifty eight would be a great place to take him. I mean, but even if they took him at forty one, I'd be I'd be okay with it. I'd understand. You know, but um, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Um, yeah, he actually has, I think, some similarities to his brother, even though they played opposite sides of the ball. They're both dogs. They both play hard. They're both physical. Uh, you know, Max will hit you. He'll ta He's a good tackler, even though he's a little undersized. He's 187, a little off the Packers' weight control, but not too far off. Um, <clears throat> you know, but he ran, ran a sub 4-4. Four, four. You know, he, he's got long arms. You know, he's got all the stuff that you look for, that the Packers look for. He's got inside-out versatility. He can play slide. He can play outside. Um, you know, he's even returned some interceptions for a touchdown. So he's got some, um, what would you call it? Balls, uh, not ball skills. What's the word? Um, almost kind of like return. Skills. You know what I mean? Kind of like Nick okay. Collins type of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, and he's like I said, he's, he's an athletic freak and then he's, he'll, he plays well against the run. Um, you know, so that's something obviously the coaches, the Packers coaches will want with this new four, three, they want corners that can play the run, you know, and, and he's a press man guy. He's good at press man. Um, you know, um, for where he's going to go, he's probably like a, a perfect fit for the Packers, I would say. 
Yeah, you know, at five eleven, I kind of want to prefer him. Um, maybe in the nickel. I think. I think what Jair is like an even six, isn't he? Five ten. Um, five ten and a quarter. Five ten. Okay, so oh well. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, Jair is Jair is versatile as well, so it. It, it'd probably be a, a, a tie between where they want to put Melton and, and Jair if he's selected. So, uh, but, uh, well, Melton's, I believe, the faster of the two, so. I think Bo was slightly faster. Yeah, yeah. Jair yeah. Versus Jair. No, 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 Max versus Jair. I think, oh, I think, I think no, Jair's I maybe, what, 4-4? Four, four, no, I think Jair was like 4-3-8, I think. Okay, 4-3-8? Okay, so. Within one hundredth of a second of each other, so. So we'll see how that one plays out. That'd be that'd be an interesting one in camp if she's got to watch and see uh, where Coach Half decides to line line them up. Maybe the experience puts Jair at the nickel slot and then let Max kind of adjust to the speed of the NFL because there's so many other things, other variables uh, when you deal with the nickel uh, between linebackers floating in zones and. Uh, the different kinds of routes that you run from the nickel versus outside. It's a little bit more pr- predictable. Uh, so that may be, that may be the best spot for a rookie to, to acclimate to the NFL game. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we talk about, you know, the running back need and we talk about the linebacking need Um it, it's perfectly possible that Green Bay decides, you know, you know we're going to sit pat where we got and we'll wait to, to next class. Um, that's a possibility. So I think Max Melton could be in play at 41 or 58. It just depends on uh, – it really just depends on that, that that round one pick. And then once that's addressed, then we'll go from there. Yep. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and package two other guys together. Um, coming out of Florida State, that's Renardo Green and Jerry and Jones. I had to beg Brian to to include Jerry and Jones, but um, they are both two scheme versatile corners. Uh, I think Jerry had a little bit more ball production, but they both have the the production. I mean, multiple interception receipt uh, seasons. Uh, I think Renardo's a little bit more the desirable one, uh, as, as Brian will tell you. Uh, he has a, a, about an inch and a quarter longer arms, um, and I think he's uh, he was second team all ACC versus uh, Jerry and was just an honorable mention. But I mean, they're they're kind of cut from the same cloth, just like uh, Terion and Kool Aid are. Um, the physicality is there. Um, they're, they've got a little bit more to do as far as like Jerrion's maybe not quite the the ag, agile athlete, um, and then Renardo has some some issues with pass interference and you know locking in his technique. So they have a, a couple of drawbacks, but uh, we don't really know what Coach Half is going to run. He's he's made some some mentions of man. He's made some some mentions of kind of like some off coverages with some read and react into it. Uh, with the Alabama pair, the Florida State pair are just as ideally suited. It's it's pick your poison. Um, Brian's going to say, you know, the longer arms will prevail, which I guess I got to concede that to him. <laughs> um, but I believe Jaron is the better athlete overall. So yep. I kind of like the athleticism there as well. Uh, well how about you, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I like both his players, of course, and I like Jerry Jones. I think he'd be a great fit in in Green Bay. Um, but like I told you before we started recording, you know, they his arms are what was it thirty and a half, and they've they've never taken a, a corner since Ted Thompson with arms that short. Um, the shortest was Shamar Jean Charles, and he was in the fifth round, where obviously you know he's not going to be. Um, and and, Jamar, and Gene Charles was like thirty and seven eighths or something like that, so it was just barely under thirty one. Everyone else had over thirty one inch arms. Um, so, like I said, I would like to, I'd like to see them take him, but I just don't think it's going to happen. But if it does happen, I'd be happy and excited. <laughs> um, because, you know, he has, again, another guy with the inside-outside versatility. He started out playing on the outside, and he, you know, he was okay. He wasn't terrible or anything like that, but he, was, he wasn't, you know, exceptional. Um, but then they moved into the slot this year, and he really kind of took off this year as, as playing in the slot. And he looks a lot, a lot better, a lot more comfortable in the slot, you know. Um, and he's the better athlete of the two, of course. He ran um, a sub 4-4. Four, four, three, eight, I think I have it. It's out of the combine. Um, 
but yeah, like he's got ball production and we just, all that stuff that we like about him. Uh, with Green, um, he's obviously not as fast. But he's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little not not bigger really per se, but more of a pure outside corner. Um, a little on the light side, he was like 186, I think it was. Um, you know, with long arms, like we said, but he's a little bit slower, like four or five. Um, and is, you know, um, and like you said, that he he has does have the issue with getting too grabby, getting too touchy, getting too uh, with his hands on receivers and stuff like that, just PIs. Um, I think he had five or six past season, something like that. Um, you know, pass interferences. So it's something that's going to have to be, he's going to really have to work on if we watch, um, you know, because you can't be doing it. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be more, uh, what's the term? Um, it, it's something that's going to be called a lot more in the NFL and they're going to catch a lot more in the NFL versus college. So um, it's something that you could, it could be an issue in the NFL. It could end up causing him not, to um not to really uh reach his potential i guess uh, if he doesn't work on that doesn't fix that but he's a physical dude you know he plays hard you see that you know uh he's decent in the run game not exceptional but he's decent in the run game um he's an okay tackler you know so you know he would fit in green bay like i said it but just i think you know you just hope he doesn't have the ahmed carroll uh, <laughs> issues where they're putting boxing gloves on him and practice and stuff like that to keep his hands off the receivers. Um, Cause you just see him panic a little bit sometimes. Um, and then that's what causes the PIs. So um, yeah, if the coaches can get with him and work on that, or if you can work on an off season type of stuff, you know, again, I think you would, he would be the, uh, the outside guy and then you pop and you put Jones in the slot uh, depending on what you want to do. But yeah, I think I like them both. And I think they both have pretty good potential. I take offense to the Shamar Jean Charles comparison. Shamar Jean Charles had a four, two, four. I don't even know how, he got like I I was I, I look I was like look at the screen like dude what are you doing like I, I know we needed a corner we could have found a undrafted free we could have got Shamar undrafted honestly if you ask me we could have found some I need to go, I want to go back and look at that draft like who else was available because Jerry and Jones is a nine six one on the RAS scale yeah. I mean short arms I don't care not as grabby as Renardo um, plug and play in the nickel. With some outside appeal, I, I think he will overachieve, quote unquote, given the arms. I think he's the better pro corner. Somebody, I mean, when we're talking about arm length anyway for a corner, it really only matters in press man. And we don't know how much press man coach half is going to run. I think, I think we have to be open to Goot maybe changing his thresholds to a degree based on input from coach half which he did say they had uh, an honest and frank conversation about uh, X's and O's for lack of better words. So, um, and then keep in mind, like coach half coached in the ACC, which means he had to play Florida state I guess multiple those guys. times in his career. So, uh, you know, he, he's probably, he's got more of a bead on probably the ACC um, and, and, and probably in some cases like the SEC and the athletic, uh, or the I'm sorry, the, the American, um, then, A. then uh, they <laughs> are, they, are they changing their name again? I think, no. Okay. no, um, anyway, you know, so Coach Half may have like, hey, like that dude, I want that dude, like if he's available and, and you're cool with it, like I want that dude, you know, there's another corner we're going to get into a little bit later that you know, we, we think you know, Coach Half is going to want on his team, but. You know, they, they watch other players, too. I mean, I mean, hell, speaking of Florida State, we remember when when Jimbo Fisher went up to Jacoby Brisket when he was at NC State. It's like, hey, I want to talk to you like and and he almost got him. But uh, tampering. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so stuff like that could happen. So uh, it'll be an interesting storyline to watch uh, as the uh, the draft plays out. All right, we're going to move on to uh, an unofficial ACC athlete. And that's uh, Notre Dame's Cam Hart. I cannot stop <laughs> talking about Cam Hart. Uh, 6'3", athletic. I think I think he's got some safety appeal. Like, I think he, whether it's outside, whether it's uh, maybe as a, you know, we always talk about receivers, you know, taller receivers being big slots. You know, he could be a big slot. If, if somebody pulls an Alan Lazard, like, hey, you're going to be in the middle. Cam Hart gets in there and just negates that whole thing. Um, he does have some trouble, uh, like a certain uh, dude in a cornfield uh, when his back is against, against the wall. 
So um, or her back is to the football, rather. So it may be best for him to be in front of the football at all times. So they're at six three, and I think two two oh five. You know, he can. I mean, an NFL offseason away is what all these dudes are. Um, Cam Hart going, you know, getting into the gym, putting on another ten pounds. That is strong safety territory. Uh, we know Xavier McKinney is going to have the free safety spot locked down. Um, I think I think Cam Hart makes makes an impact right away just because of the size. And I mean, he's a he's a flat nine on the RAS scale, um, four or five speeds. It's adequate, um, and he his three cone was a little there. And the shuttle was just that. So, you know, he may be a candidate of like, okay, outside only uh, with the, you know, the possibility of maybe moving to safety. Uh, I've got a, I've got a mid, mid, you know, third round grade on him. So if the Packers haven't taken a corner yet, uh, I will be screaming his name on the live stream. Like go get him. Um, what, what would you say, Brian? Yeah, I agree somewhat. Um, yeah, I think um, since the jelly, his jellies weren't great, they were kind of okay. Like, especially with the Packers, the Packers really treasure that stuff, especially with the corners. Uh, you know, his, his three cone, like like you said, this it was seven one two, and the Packers usually like sub seven. Um, so that's not great. The Packers still in back, and at his size, the Packers may see him as a safety. I, I don't know for sure, obviously. Um, but um, yeah, I think he could play some safety. Um, I think if you're playing on the outside, I don't think you want you want him impressed in, in too much. I think you want to play him kind of more more zone where he's kind of kind of face the ball, face the receiver, you know, all that good stuff. Where he can just use his vision and, and he doesn't have to worry about having to turn and run and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, I think he can do it. But I just don't, I wouldn't want him playing press man most of the time. But yeah, I mean, kind of like you said, I, I kind of agree that I think he couldn't end up moving to safety. You know, he had you pack on you know five pounds or whatever on him in, uh, in next off season or whatever it is. And he can play free safety, strong safety, whatever. You know, he can play split, split field. He can play free, strong, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, because he's got the size for it and he's got the the uh, temperament to do it, you know, the physicality to do it. He's, he's a good tackler. Um, you know, he's. I think that, um, again, it just depends on where he goes, what, what teams think about him. Um, but I could see him going – I think I'm a little bit higher on him. I think I, I could see him going early third round. Uh, maybe if someone really if someone really falls in love with late, in love with him, they take him late second. But um, yeah, I think early third is where he probably goes. I think, I think, like I said, we, we I think he could play safety. Some teams may look at him as a safety as well. Um, given the weakness of this safety class, um, and you know what? Let's just let's just kind of give it a whirl here, because uh, we're talking about it. I think. Let's see. If he's a nine as a corner, oh, I already looked up. He's like eight, he's like just under nine as a safety. Yeah, eight nine eight. I, I got a nine. Yeah, I got a nine oh seven at strong, and then I guess he's probably the eight nine eight at free. Yeah, eight nine eight free safety. Okay, well, actually, I have him at nine oh five at free and nine oh seven. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe math on updated it. Maybe, but maybe. um, Last time I looked it up, that was a while ago. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> nine nine for all all three positions. Somebody's gonna look at it. and then with this safety class, when well, you know we had Tyler Newman not test well, we had Cameron Kitchens not test well. Um, Cole Bishop is a little one dimensional. Sorry, we're yeah. getting into the safety episode now. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's a wonder where Cam Hart may go. He may go mid second because people are like you know what, based on the testing, based on the fact that he can tackle, based that he's physical. Uh, I, I hope he can do it, and then if he can't do it corner you know so it, it'll be interesting to see how cam hart is i i would love to have him in the green and gold um i mean he already played his south bend so he's used to the cold you know some people like to say that well that matters you know <laughs> i mean granted nick collins came from bethune cookman and daytona beach but uh you know that's that's another story for another day um we're gonna keep on going speaking of physical corners uh we've got former uh carrington valentine's uh, teammate Andrew Phillips. Um, Andrew Phillips, uh, Brian made me uh, discard my bias for him. Um, he is a very physical dude. Uh, tackling is not an issue uh, with Andrew. Uh, 
Well, actually, he did miss a couple tackles, to be honest. He he missed a couple tackles. Let's let's go with that. Um he'll he'll make the tackle if he's uh if he's if he's on point, but uh he'll miss some tackles too. So that um we don't want any more Joe Barry uh any moments like uh when we played Atlanta when nobody could tackle. So hopefully he can clean that up. Um and then the other thing, you know, going to the to the gym criteria, he's got no interceptions. Like what do you like what do you do? They throw the ball in the SEC. I mean, they throw it, you know. I mean, I mean, it, maybe not Big 12 throwing it, but they throw the ball. I mean, so I'm 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 kind of wondering what what what's going on. I mean, Kentucky's a rival with Florida. Florida, you know, airs it out. Um, then you've got, you know, Tennessee airs it out. And Tennessee really airs it out now. Um how you don't have any interceptions, bro? I don't know. Like, you know what? Now the bias is back. No interceptions. I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm off them. Um, Brian, you're gonna have to salvage his value. I'm I'm at I'm in the fifth now. I'm in the fifth. Um, yeah, I, I like him. Like I said, uh, he has his somewhat similar. I'm not saying he's. I'm not comparing him as a player, but somewhat similar size to Jair. Uh, just a little over five ten and a half, one ninety. You know, he's got good good arm length for his, especially for his height. He's got 31 inch arms, and he ran a 4.48. Um, and he's got good you know, good agility. He's under seven, uh, three cone. You know, he had a, a 42 vertical, so he's explosive. He's got good speed. He's got good agility. Um, you know, he's got and again, another guy that actually has um, inside outside versatility because in uh, 2022 he played both inside and outside. Uh, this past season he played basically 90 percent of the time outside, but uh, 2022 he played a mix. Um, and that's probably where I think what will happen with him in the NFL as far as uh, 2022, he'll play a mix. And I think you'll probably see him, especially as a rookie, probably play him. You're going to play him more in the slot. Um, and then maybe even just his just his spot. He just may, may end up being really just a really good slot corner. Um, interceptions, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it'd be nice to have interceptions, of course, but uh, I'm not too worried about it because there's another guy we'll be talking about later that has like one career interception that I think is really good. But, um, but yeah, I, and I think he has some – some similarities in his play style actually to Valentine, Carrington Valentine, he played at Kentucky as well, uh, former teammate. I think they're both kind of physical guys and coverage. They're press guys. Um, they both still kind of need work in zone and improving in, in their zone coverages. Um, he can get a, not as bad as Carrington was as far as getting handsy, but he, he can get a little handsy sometimes, but it's not as bad as Carrington was at college. It's not like a, a something that I'm like, well, I'm worried about that, like with Bernardo Green type of thing. Um, you know, this is a minor thing, but um, yeah, I like him. I, I would take him in the fourth round and just drop him in there a slot in the in the slot as a rookie. I don't know. You, you gotta have picks. You, you just gotta. I mean, I mean, that's that's what you're here for, right? I mean, Revis hardly had, didn't never really had too many picks. You have like they throw to him exactly. They were throwing it. At, they were throwing at Andrew. <laughs> but but they they had to learn. They had to throw to him. He had to break up passes. He had to get interceptions. And then they stopped throwing to him. I mean, it ain't like Kentucky's competing for the SEC championship. So they get thrown on. I mean, Carrington got one interception. So, I mean, what? I, mean, I don't know. Well, well, one interception, Carrington was seventh round. So, um, yeah, but obviously he's proved he shouldn't have gone that late. <laughs> true. Fair enough. Fair enough, sir. Uh, I'm still fifth. No interceptions, no production. Now, now I got to go look at the tape again. I was like, hey, were they not throwing to him? Was he just, could he not catch the ball at all? Like, I'm, I, not, I mean, all right, let me at least see some pass breakups. If he got his hand on the ball, if he knocked it down, uh, I, I give him a little I mean, credit. I, I say every four breakups equals an interception. So, we gotta we gotta go back to the tape and count his his pit breakups. If he ain't got no breakups, I'm I'm totally ice cold. Well, I, I got the numbers actually. He was targeted 57 times, gave up 30 38 catches, uh for 66 percent, 66 percent, which is not that good. Um, but past breakups he had six on the season, so not bad, not amazing, but not bad. Um, gave up uh, about 11 and a half yards of catch, so not great again, but um. Yeah, like I said, I think it, I think twenty twenty two is not, it's twenty two numbers were a little bit better. Fifth round, book it, book it. 
which means now we're out of order, possibly. So because there is a guy who had some production and I was also in the SEC, and that's uh, Mississippi State's to Cameron Richmond. Um, very, very fast. I, ha- I think I have him at 434. Uh, a very, uh, for lack of better words, I think he's a little bit of a cerebral player. He's got, um, he, he recognized routes. He breaks on routes. Um, I don't know if I want him on the outside in the pros, but in the nickel, uh, I would love him in the nickel. I, I, I think I think that I think you have to have a little bit of instinct when you're playing nickel because you don't know when the, where the guy is going to go. You know if he's going to the left, to the right, backwards. Um, I mean, I, I think I think that's where he'll find a home um, in the NFL is in the nickel. Um, I mean, despite being well. I have him at six one. Yeah, you, you have him a little bit taller, Brian. Um, I have him at uh six two and two eights. So six he two and a smaller two. on tape. He really does. Oh, was, he was one eighty eight, so a little light, but not ah, super was, okay. So I, I I still take him in the I still take him in the nickel. I think the nickel is his home. Not to say that he can't play outside. I just prefer him in the nickel. Um. I I don't know what I don't know how how to feel about DeCameron. I think he's probably the priority corner in day three, like in the fourth round. It just really depends on where these guys go. Um I definitely like him um more than Andrew, even though he just uh DeCameron just had a bunch of a bunch of breakups. I don't know if I don't, he may not have had any interceptions either. You but know. um, but he had a bunch of breakups and he got some tackles. Um, so I think it's just a matter. Of, maybe a pick. Maybe pick your poison between Andrew and DeCameron. But um, I'm gonna take the faster. I always take the faster player or the the length. Uh, and actually, DeCameron has the length and he's got the speed. So, um, <laughs> despite the lack of interceptions, but he does have some pass breakups to his name. Um. Yeah, it just depends on where this where this cornerback class is at for DeCameron. I think he's probably somewhere in the fourth round. Um, I feel like I got to pair him with Andrew, so <laughs> I'll t- I'll take him bottom of the fourth, and Andrew's somewhere at the top of the fifth. That's where I'm at. You you, you can you can you can do your evaluation. <laughs> Some hater right there. Um. Yeah, so like Cameron's been my guy since I finally got around to watching him. Like, I don't know, because I looked at his, site, his profile and I was like, man, this guy's pretty athletic. Let me check him out. So, yeah, ever since I started watching, he's been like one of hashtag my guys. Um, so, I think actually I, I, I would be perfectly fine. I think I could see him going in like the third round. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, lo- I love this film, man. Like I said, um, yeah, the interception I have, the lack of interceptions is not great. But uh, when he watches film, he's just like he's just always there on the, the receiver. Like he gives very little space, little very little room, for any, very little. Uh, there's like almost no windows for the quarterback to throw in. And when there is, it's usually something like where he's playing off coverage, and it's a quick like wide receiver screen or a quick hitch or something like that. Like if you look at his numbers, I don't, I don't have them on hand, but if you look at his numbers, he gave this year like yards per catch was like really low, and like I think even against. Um, I forgot who it was. I, they played recently where uh, he gave, well, not recently, but a game I watched somewhat recently was he gave up like five catches on the game, but it was for like 40 yards or something like that. Like every catch was like five or six yards. It was like, and he was playing off. So, cause he looks a lot more comfortable in off coverage. I'll say that, or I mean, not off uh, press coverage, uh, off coverage. He looks a little, not a little uncomfortable, but he looks, he's okay. Like he, cause he's got closing speed. He can click and close and all that stuff. Um, I think he just a little bit better in press. Um, but yeah, like I love his size. I love his speed. Uh, there was numerous times they played LSU where he was he kept up fine with Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas. He had no problem, no issues keeping up with those guys in their routes. Um, he was uh, I forget who it was now, but there was a receiver he played against who was trying to like do all these crazy um, uh, moves and stuff on his on his route, like spinning around all this crazy stuff. Stayed with him perfectly fine. You know, some smaller slot receiver. I can't remember who it was offhand, but it was it was a really quick, fast guy. So had no issues staying with him. Um, you know, 
um, not the greatest run defender, but he's not terrible. Um, he's a really good tackler, actually. He only missed, I think, two tackles this season. And one of the tackles he missed was one, it ended up being a touchdown, but he was like, he was in the red zone anyway. That was like the only touchdown he gave up this season. Um, so like if he had, if he didn't miss that tackle, he would have given like no touchdowns this season. But yeah, I think he's just one of those guys who is kind of like, kind of not saying he's as good, of course, but it reminds me a little bit of a Daryl Revis in the sense of, again, he's a guy who's just going to, he's going to cover your receiver and he's just going to not going to leave you any windows to throw into. And even if there is, it's going to be some short little five yard, six yard hitch, something like that. Um, you know, he'll break up some passes, of course, like I said, and, and he'll get, he'll get beat occasionally. I think he gave up a big, if I remember right, he gave a big pass to, um, I think Lake neighbors this year or something. I think, I think it was, but you know, overall, like I said, you know, he gives up, he doesn't give up much. He's lot tall. He's athletic. He's got long arms. Um, he hasn't played much in the slot. I think he's more of an outside guy, but, uh, yeah, I would perfectly find the Packers took him in the third round. Oh, third. No, oh, the third. No interceptions. In the third. Yeah, one interception last year in <laughs> 2022. I'm gonna leave him in the fourth, even though six two is great. Um, I well six two corners, six two six three corners. The the Cam Hearts of the world. They're gonna. They're of course they're gonna want to press. Um. The average NFL receiver is, I think, about six, three and a half. They're only giving up an inch. Um, and then most receivers, I won't say most, but a good amount of receivers, like if you put your hands on them and you're physical, a lot of times, even in the pros, um, they don't like that too much. So I, I can see that versus, you know, if you're a little bit shorter, you know, you're the five, nine, five, ten nickel dude. You may enjoy playing off because you can you can rely on your agility and your speed to break in on routes. Um, yeah, no interception. One interception. Um, last year. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, no way. He has. I'm actually looking at his numbers right now. He actually has no no career interceptions. <laughs> I thought I saw an interception on his tape. I thought maybe was called back. Maybe, yeah. I think it was caught. I gotta look at. I I swear, unless it was a no, maybe it's out of bounds or something like that. No, it wasn't an all star game. I gotta look at the. I swear, I saw him make an interception somewhere. I don't know who he was playing. I wonder if it was LSU. It had to have been a penalty. It had to have been a penalty. I gotta maybe. look at the LSU tape. But until then, no interceptions. Even if it was called back, I'm in the fourth, and then Andrew Phillips gonna have to wait. So now a guy who a lot of people have mocked, you know, to us because he is a uh, a Boston College and alumnus. That is Elijah Jones. He's got the length. He's got the ball skills. Um, Brian's gonna knock him because he's about to turn like. 26 or something like that. But I mean, who cares about that? You get me to the Super Bowl before you're 30. That's all that matters to me. You know, everybody can't play for 20 years like Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre. Like most most of these dudes are going to play four to seven years. They're going to make their money. They're going to go buy a Chevy dealership and they're going to go live happily ever after. Um, I'm I mean, he he knows whatever coach half is going to teach. Um, he can teach it to other players. Um, I'm, I'm on board. I'm on board. So it's just a matter of, uh, if the Packers are interested in him because he's a little bit older, he was first team all ACC this year, um, over Jerry and Jones over Renardo green. So, I mean, I, I don't know what else to do about this guy, Brian. I mean, I, you know what? I, I got to put him over to Cameron Richardson, actually. I mean, he's not maybe as, as long. I think he, what, he's, what, a 5'11"? No, he's 6'1". 6'1", so, yeah. I'm, I'm giving up an inch. I'm giving up an inch. 6'1 and a half. <laughs> I'm giving half an inch. Man, yeah, I, I got to slot him over to Cameron at this point. I, I got to. I mean – First team, you know, all ACC, and I, I got to, I gotta give, I, I gotta give it to him. Um, I don't, I really don't have. Yeah, the only knock on him is about to turn like 25, 26, but 
if he's ready to play now and coaches have system, um, and he's smart, I mean, well, you, well, you can't be dumb going to Boston College. You just can't be. It's true. Um, so, and he's got a million pass breakups. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, and I think what I think I have seven interceptions career. I think I have seven. So my nature, this is just my evaluation. Production has to go ahead. So now, now, now I've got, I've got, I've got Jones like solid fourth round grade, you know, after that Decameron, and then after that we can, we can get to Andrew Phillips. Uh, what would you say, Brian? You, you're going to say he's off the board because he's he's old. I know you're going to say that. No, 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 because he's a later pick. I mean, if 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 there was talk about him being a first round pick, then yeah, they're not going to take him a first round at that age. But um, yeah, he'll no, he'll be he, he just turned 24 in January, so he, it's somewhat recently. But um, <clears throat> yeah, but he was only a buck 85 at six one and a half. I kind of worried that it's not a good weight, and he's already 24. I don't know if. Is he does he have the ability to put any more weight on that frame? I think you kind of usually when 24 years old, usually your body's kind of maxed out, um, physically, usually at least. So I don't know if he'll be able to put on any weight on the frame. And he's you can see it, you he, he has a thin looking dude. Some guys are you know they're not really heavy, but like they have a thick looking frame, but um, he's his frame is kind of thin. Um, uh, but he was still he's a solid player, but I just don't think he's anything special. Um, what's it called? Yeah, he has, but you know, he was like. He was basically BC's defense. There was base they, they basically had no one else on that defense. Um, there's a couple guys that might get drafted next year, probably UDFA type or late day three type guys, like an edge, a couple edge rushers and stuff like that. But um, outside of that, there was like there's like nobody on that defense really. That's like an NFL like definitely like NFL like uh, uh, potential draft pick type of player. Uh, but yeah, he had a good really good vertical. He had a 42 and a half inch vertical, so he's got some explosiveness, you know. But his agility drills were kind of okay slash not great. Um, you know, like, like I said, his age stuff kind of worries me. Um, I, th- like I said, I, I kind of think he's maxed out. So I think I would, I would take him like fifth round. Um, you know, he's, he's an okay tackler. Um, you know, and just, I just think he's, like I said, his upside is just kind of limited. Um, I, I would be okay with the Packers take him though, if they brought him in and drafted him and, you know, have him kind of help teach the defense. And he was like the number four corner or something like that. I think that'd be fine. Um, I just don't, I just don't know if he's going to be on their board at that weight and the size and the age and stuff, but um, we'll see. Maybe <laughs> the upsides he played in Coach Half's system, and he knows what he's doing. He doesn't have to put on any more weight. I mean, I, I mean, I'm 15 pounds heavier than that guy. My hair under 190. Whatever. He can he can play in the nickel. He, he'll be fine. Six one and a half in the nickel. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll, he, I, I don't what know else do you want from the guys? First team over Renardo Green and Jerry and Jeff. First team. Those things have been proven to be kind of popularity contests. It is a pop at, at Boston College. A popularity contest. <laughs> he, he practically had to sell his soul to get that award. He, they, they felt it was a pity award. No, oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. They felt All bad. Right. We'll, 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 we'll let that one go. We'll see where he, if he, if he ends up an all pro in, in his year 27 season, you know, we lost out on a good one. We lost out on a good one. All right. But moving forward, I kind of wrap this thing up. Uh, the probably the tallest corner in this year's class, and that's Oregon's Kyrie Jackson. He's a he's a tower at six four. Um, you know, gives you those Plaxico Burris vibes. Uh, he's not Cam Hart. He I I wouldn't probably play him as safety. Um, he he's not very strong. He's he's uh, despite being as tall, he didn't have any he didn't have any real bulk or mass to go with it. Um, he will, he will tackle. Let's say that he will tackle. Um, I mean, it's not hard to tackle a running back when you're taller than them, um, or at least put a hand on them. You know, most, most running backs are like six, one and below. He's got three inches on him minimum. Um, so it's not hard to just go lay on a guy. Um, so 
he's not necessarily very agile. He didn't test very well. Well, he tested okay. Yeah, he didn't do the agilities. Um, so he may be out of the Packers threshold for RAS. We'll see. Um, he's outside only. He's not nickel, not safety. He's he's a guy where you know let him defend the deep ball. He may even be more of a zone dude, possibly. Uh, it, I, I think he might have some trouble on double moves and things of that nature. He may be more of a cover three uh, quarters, prevent, cover six kind of dude. Um, I'm still interested. I just want to – I just need to see if he can do more. Uh, what would you say, Ryan? Yeah, I think we're pretty much in agreement on him. Uh, you know, he's just under 6'4", he's little, but he's – for being almost 6'4", he's a little small at 194 as far as being that tall. Um, but his, you know, his, his workout was okay. It, it wasn't great. Um, he didn't do the agilities. Uh, he had 11 foot broad jump, but then his vertical was like 36 and a half, which is okay. Um, but yeah, um, you know, and he didn't do the agilities, which kind of makes you wonder usually, you know, some people, you know, the saying is if they're healthy and they don't do the test, they're trying to hide something. So his agility is probably not that, he's probably not that agile. Um, but he's a, he's a big dude. He's he's good. He's he's been playing a lot. He's got a lot of, a lot of he's not. Well, let me rephrase that. He started this past season. He had a, he played the whole season, and so he had a lot of experience this past season, um, full time starter and all that. Um, but um, how do I put it? Yeah, but I, I think he's he might be more of a, a zone like cover three type of guy, like a Legion of Boom, you know, Seattle cover three type of guy. Um, I think he'd fit in perfectly with those type of defenses. Um, I think he could play in Green Bay. I just I wouldn't take him very high. Um, probably f- fifth round, I would say. Um, yeah, because just because I'm just I don't know about the agility. Where I, I worry about him being able to play press man. Um, I think obviously he'd be fine in zone, but um, his ability to play press man, I'm just not sure if he'll be able to keep up with the you know NFL athletes um, at wide receiver. Um, but I think you know he's a solid player. I think he'll play in the league for eight years, 10 years, whatever. Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. As long as say something, of course. I give him five. I give him five. I give him five. Uh, you know, if, if he if he's, looks like Tarzan plays like Jane, uh, I give him three. He, But at 6'4", he will be a UFL Hall of Famer. Um, so he, he has a, a bright future in pro football. Maybe just not the NFL. All right, we're going to come back down to earth, and we have Auburn's Nehemiah Pritchett. I didn't want him on the show, but Brian said, you know, hey, he's got to be on here. Uh, he's paper thin. Um, he ain't going to tackle much. Um, and there are a couple there are a couple instances where he got, he got toasted. Um, more than I would care to observe. He does have t- like I think two interceptions though, so that's something. That's yeah. something. But um, yeah, he got he got burnt a little too much for my taste. And then when it came to the tackling game, they run the football in the SEC. They don't do nothing else. They you're gonna get some big backs. And there are a couple times where Nehemiah Pritchett was uh. ESPN not top 10 material. He was he was taken for a ride by a couple SEC running backs. Um, but typically the Georgia game uh, is a little little ugly. Um, so I'm out. I'm out. I mean, <laughs> if I just need a corner, you know, for camp, you know, we can say the back of the six going into seven. Brian's going to tell you different. <laughs> First round pick. Just kidding. Uh, just kidding. No, no, but I, I, I get it. Like to an extent, like I think he was a little undersized previous in previous years and stuff. He, he just took him off to kind of bulk up, you know, he was one ninety at the combine. I think, I don't think he'll be an issue with him keeping that weight on. Cause he, he has, he always, he always looked like he could add weight to his frame, but I mean, he ran a four, three, six, he's fast. Um, he's a four year starter. He's got a lot of experience. Um, you know, his uh, play against the run has been okay. But uh, his tackling has been hit and miss at times. That's something I think he definitely needs to work on. I think maybe the added weight will help, maybe. Um, but yeah, the tackling's been an issue. But you know, he gets batted balls and stuff like that. So he gets some ball production. Um, you know, 
he's not super agile, not super quick. So I think he's basically a um, outside corner only, you know, he, you know, and, um, but I think, um, you know, explosive testing wasn't that great. So I think, yeah, outside corner only, but uh, you know, with that speed, he could probably play special teams and be, you know, in a, a good to solid number four corner, you know, he'll get you, uh, you know, interception or two a year, some batted balls, um, you know, may give up some stuff here and there, but, you know, he'll be an okay um, number four guy. And I'd probably be okay with him in the, like the fifth round. Special teams. He ain't going to tackle nobody fast. You might, if, if the, if the returners on the side, on the outside, he may push him out of bounds, but a guy coming at him full speed, like after 30 yards, he, he might do the the little the little you know he dives at the ankles like he tries to put his shoulder into their ankles that's that, that's what you're gonna get from Pritchett I'm I'm sorry yeah, yeah. Um, it's fine that's all you need just get as long as you get him down it, I mean he, he's just gonna get they're gonna jump over him <laughs> I mean if he I mean I mean I, I think he put on that weight I, I think that was creatine personally. And you know he's gonna come into camp at 180. They're gonna be like, "What the hell?" Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. Um, all right, to close out the show, um, we've got a solid dude, um, but the the off season process was was not kind to him, and that is a uh, TCU's Josh Newton. Um, a year ago. I'm probably just coming into the to the season uh, before they played Colorado. I had Josh Newton probably midday two. I mean, he was coming off a of first team All Big Twelve selection. Um, good, good instincts, um, inside or outside, man or zone. Uh, probably a little bit better playing off because he's he's I think I've got him at like five ten and three fourths I believe um but he can be he can play press um he he, he can he can bait and switch um I I like him but the the offseason pr- process was not kind to him um he didn't test very well um uh, well he tested he tested okay at everything he was mid at everything um, he is, he is ground Chuck. He is just good enough. Um, and so with Josh Newton, you really just got to look at the tape. You got to look at the tape. You got to look at what he's did, um, going up against the, the Caleb Williams and the, you know, Kyler Murray's of the world, you know, cause he's been in the, the he's been in college that long. Um, and, see, and and there's a good body of work there. Like I said, none of none of the testing was horrible. It was just he's basic. So if the tape is good, and the tape is good, the tape is very good actually in many instances. Um, he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna have to roll with it. Um, so I don't know if he, I'm, the Packers may be cool on him because of the. the I think he's at six four and some change for the RAS. But if we're talking the back of the fifth, we're talking the sixth round, we're talking the seventh, and Josh Newton is still hanging out, just looking at his phone, you know, talking to his agent. I'm all over Josh Newton because this is another Carrington Valentine waiting to happen. He's not Carrington Valentine. He's not. They're not the same. They're not built the same. That you're asking for a yin and a yang here, salt and a pepper. But if he's there, I'm going to take a risk. And then if he can capture that first team all Big 12 form, I got a solid. I'm my my corner room is done. I'm I'm locked in. Um, Brian, you're turning purple because you love him so much. Uh, you take it away from here. My camera. Um, yeah. So I I like Josh a lot too. Um, I like this film. Uh, he, there's just some games he struggled. Um, games were like, especially against Texas, he struggled in that game against, um, worthy and times against Adonai Mitchell. Um, but a couple of passes he gave up, it was just like, he barely met, like there was one that's, I think it's on ESPN. People have seen it a bunch of times where 
uh, Worthy caught and he took and he, and um, Newton dove and he missed and Worthy took off for a touch like a seventy yard touchdown something like that. Um, but if you really watch the play, if you watch it on all twenty two and you look at, that, at all the different angles and stuff, you can see he barely like he basically what happened was he he tried to bat the ball away, but he jumped like a hair too soon and he missed. So you know if he jumps like a hair like a half a second later, he probably bats it away. Or at the very least, you know, or even if he doesn't jump out, he just tries to tackle worthy. It's it's a minimal gain. So it wasn't like he got completely toasted and burned. It was just a, a small thing that he was off on. And it, because Xavier Worthy's, you know, Olympic level speed, he just caught it and he was gone. Um, but yeah, I think he does struggle sometimes with guys who are really athletic and really fast and stuff like that. But I like him a lot. Uh, he played outside. I think he's going to be a slot in the NFL um, just to, because he's not super athletic. Um yeah, his lack of, lack of uh, um, any any exceptional athleticism, I should say. Um, but I see, I was like, what you said earlier about his RAS score, it's 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 weird because he had, like you said, he had that six point four, but then when you look at um, you look at his uh, what's the word? Do we look at his uh, his different tests? You know, they all barely, they're all like right there with like the Packers, like they all meet all the Packers thresholds. So it's kind of funny because he meets all the thresholds, but he has a low overall score. Um, so I think probably a lot of people are thinking he's probably off their board and he, he might not be, I mean, he may, he may be, but, um, he might not be. So, but anyway, but yeah, like I said, I, you know, he's, like I said, I like him in coverage. Uh, you know, he's a, he's probably better. I don't know if he's a great man. I'm not a man, a uh, great press cover, press corner. Sorry. I can't talk. Um, but I, I like him a lot. Um, like I said, I, I put him in the slot. Um, I take, I take him on in the fifth round. I have no problem with him playing in the slot. Um, you just got to remember, he does have some athletic limitations. Um, you probably don't want him playing in the slot over like Jalen Waddell or something like that. Um, Jalen Waddell probably toast him, but, um, outside of guys like that, I think you put him in the slot. You can probably play him on the outside sometimes too, just, you know, cause he's got some decent testing numbers and he can athletically stay up, stay, stay with most outside receivers. Um, but yeah, I think, I think he's an overall solid player. You can probably play him, you probably play him special teams and like, you know, your number four corner type of guy. Special teams, I'm with not 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 Pritchett, um, and 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 look, I I got I got Newton at five ten, and I Mitchell is six four. He's got yeah. half a foot on him. Five ten so, and a half, six inches. And so, I, I know Mitchell was six two, six two, two six two something at the combine. I I had six four, close enough. Texas says six four, six six two and two eight, so basically a six two even. All right. He's still <laughs> bigger. He's still way bigger. He's still way bigger. Like, of course. All right. He, he he missed it by a hair. And and football is a game of inches. So he missed it by a hair. He gave him a 70-yard touchdown. Well, that, was, that was against Worthy, but yeah. Oh, same thing. Same same, same player. It, it's Texas. It's Texas. Look. Yeah, but the point was he dove he dove after the ball like a hair a second too soon. It wasn't like uh, an athletic limitation thing. It was just like he just miscalculated. Coach Half will fix that. He'll fix it. It's, it's, it's needed here. Right? Six round, book it, future NFL six corner of the year. Um, he, yeah, he's he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Day three target all over it, and said and forget it. He'll continue the Packers tradition of finding future Pro Bowl corners in the seventh round. <laughs> All right, that wraps it up. Um, we actually took a little bit longer than I thought we were going to do. All right, we got one more position for you. The actually position I really don't want to talk about. Um, but we have to. We're going to try to rock that in tomorrow, and then we will get ready for our finale. It's been fun for you guys keeping up with us this long. Um, it has been an absolute chore for us, um, but we do it because we love this historic franchise um, and uh, we like getting yelled at on Twitter. Um, so stay locked in. We're going to cover this safety class and then we'll get to the, to the nitty gritty on who's going where when they're going, why they're going, and why your mock draft doesn't matter more than ours. Um, so stay locked in. This is Cheesehead TV's Packers Draft Room. We'll see you next time. Go Pack Go. Go Pack Go.